podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. In a dark Elizabeth City shed, warm lamplight illuminates a young artist. The art, the craft, is a marvel in itself, but only part of a larger story. Which brings us to New Year's Eve, the last day of 1988, and birth of a baby named Rebecca Joy Brown. By all appearances, a healthy little girl. But then, her parents noticed something unusual. Even as a little baby, and Becca didn't make eye contact. She seemed to look at the world with a scientific disinterest. She could go from perfectly placid to exploding within seconds. Rebecca was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a high-functioning form of autism with certain behavioral characteristics, smart, for instance, but socially awkward. I'm not even sure what, what makes it hard. Um, it's difficult for her to communicate using words and using nonverbals. Those are hard for her to, to pick up with people. You know, she said to me once, do you want me to look at you or do you want me to listen to you? I can't do both. Finding their way through the social world with all of its inconsistencies can be quite a challenge for Asperger's or Aspies as they're sometimes called. Mom has made me schedules that have everything by the half hour. We don't do surprises. We don't do change. When my schedule gets, gets out of whack, it's... it's um, we don't do it happily anyhow. You know, I'm always asking, well, what are we going to do? And then what are we going to do after that? And they're like, well, what, what does it matter? We're just going to go and do it. It really does matter to me. It became clear that she wasn't going to follow the same path as the other kids had. When, when I was in high school, I was having a tough time because I was like, well, what do people like me grow up and do, you know? And then wonderstruck when Rebecca's parents saw an artist carving with a tiny drill. They use it to carve glass and metal and wood and eggshells. She, she looked at that with these shining eyes and said, I can do this. She got a little loan at our bank and bought the equipment. The fellow who had sold her this told her to try an eggshell and she picked it up and started playing with it. And it was like, this is my niche. And it was. Rebecca's father converted an outbuilding into a studio for her and built an ingenious workstation, which accommodated Becca's strong sensitivity to sound, touch, taste, sight, and smell. To try to shield her from flying egg pieces, he took plexiglass and bent it in a curved dome. He put a fan in the bottom that would sweep the air down, uh, put a filter system in it that would deal with part of the smell. That's the easy part. The hard part was up to Becca. Could this intelligent and creative young woman find success in so demanding a craft? Could she face the inevitable disappointments and see things through? Several times that I just stopped and was crying in between just because it required so much concentration, so much focus. And I kept telling myself that this would get better and that I would get used to it. And, and I, I did eventually. Becca, who has struggled to control herself from these violent meltdowns, to be able to hold an eggshell in her hand and carve it till there's almost nothing left, and it's very, very fragile. It's like strength and fragility. God juxtaposes in so many places in life, and there he's done it. Duck eggs, goose eggs, ostrich, and other large eggs, each has become Rebecca's fragile canvas. Her pieces are charged with a creative energy, so light they appear to float in air, so delicate it seems that just to touch them could invite disaster. In time, her work caught the eye of art lovers. She began selling her eggs online and at craft shows, which gave her more confidence. And with the unswerving support of her family, Becca began setting goals. And one of the things she said was, I really want to be more independent. So she began taking college classes. And after years of playing backyard catch with her brother, developed a passion to play softball. The softball 
has a set of rules. There's a way that it's done. It has a very strong structure, and she does great with structure. Although some aspects of the game remain elusive, the emotional, social parts. Her mother also encouraged another, more creative pursuit. And she's like, well, you know, you go to painting class today. Why don't you just paint how you feel? It just exploded. Some days when you just beyond words, it helps me so much if I'm able to actually put it on the canvas. And I'm like, yes, that is exactly how I was feeling. You know, it showed her that she has something inside that really can be beautiful. Sometimes I really see the pattern in my mind, can see what is supposed to be on that egg. This is an emu egg. It's got three layers, this blackish, greenish color on top, then it goes to a lighter green underneath, and then just before you break through, it's white. This isn't paint. If there's a hairline crack in it, the drill's gonna find it before you're finished with it and it'll just pop out. It's, it's very frustrating when you've worked that long and you've got it that far and it just goes to pieces on you. You can be upset for a minute, but then you have to get over it and move on. Which she's also applying to her day-to-day -day scheduling. If it was written in pen and something got off, the rest of the day is just shot, you know. Mom helps me. She's like, you're gonna write this in pencil so that if something does happen, you just erase it and you write it in again. Sometimes I have to do that three or four times a day. Which isn't much different than the problem-solving approach she takes with her work. On a day I was kind of having a bad day, so I just thought, well, why not just try something different? I just picked it up and started making holes. It went from this huge ostrich egg to, I don't know, I've probably taken out half of the egg. This is kind of my masterpiece right now. Creating the masterpiece called life, we all know, can be a two steps forward, one step back affair. And for the inspiring young woman named Rebecca Brown, one, two, three. the love and support of family, plus a dawning realization that often the things that make us different are the things that make us special. They expect something from me. Now, yeah, Madam Green Lady Dolphins, catcher number two, Rebecca Brown. They're gentle with me on the hard days, but they also push me. They push me to be better than I was yesterday, and then better than that, and then better than that. And because of that, I think I am where I am today. And it's not easy, but I, I talk to people. I go out and carve for longer, and I go out and do a harder design. But now it's like, you know, I went and did that, you know. It's kind of like a medal on my shirt, you know. You, you lived through that, so there's no reason I can't go and do something else. Having Asperger's is a very difficult aspect of life, but you don't have to stay in a bubble. You can go out and be somebody, too. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.